Oh, we've been there, right? This is Malaka. The Before old we knew Dutch. each other, we've been there, right? Hi, kawan. Selamat datang ke saluran kami. So this is Steven Vera Adventures. In part of this video, we will do one of your requests, and this is the geography of Malaysia. So let's start. Let's get started. It's quite interesting. This one. Let's see if we, because we know a bit about Malaysia. But I think maybe this guy knows more. Let's get started. Well, here we go. Ever since I made the Indonesia episode, you have no idea how many Malaysians were like, Okay, now that you did our cousins episode, do not mess with ours. Oh, don't worry, Malaysia. And here to reassure you, I made you some nasi goreng. Nasi goreng is nice. I like that it's nasi goreng. To learn geography. No! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs. How refreshing! We are back in Southeast Asia, and today, after Brunei, East Timor, Indonesia, we are doing the last country in the Nusantara Archipelago, Malaysia. I didn't even know that it was called the Nusantara Archipelago. You know that? No. No. Already, 27 seconds in, we already learned something. I'm Singapore. Ahem. Oh, sorry, didn't see you there, Singapore. You're so small. So what do the Malaysians wow. reach the table that the Ouch. others don't? <laughs> well, let's find out in the first segment. Q transition. Now this is going to be really fun because Malaysia's land has so many unique twists and turns and explaining it, it you know, it's kind of like doing a Rubik's Cube blindfolded. Right, Ken? Right, totally. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you got it? I don't know, did no. I? You got it. <laughs> cool. Uh, can I have my lunch break now? Oh, <laughs> Ken, you know I don't speak Tagalog. Back to the coal mines. <laughs> First of all, Malaysia is located in Southeast Asia, divided into two main parts. Peninsular Malaysia, where about 40% of the land, which also has the southernmost tip oh. of mainland Asia. I didn't know that either. For some reason, I just assumed that Peninsular Malaysia was much bigger than the rest, but it's... Me much... too. Yeah, because KL is there, right? Oh, interesting. Wow. wow. Tanjung Piai, while East Malaysia or Malaysian Borneo takes up about 60% of the country's land on the island of Borneo, making it one of the only two islands shared by three nations along with Cyprus. If you want to be technical, Cyprus kind of has four, including the UN buffer zone, but you get the point. Just watch the Cyprus episode. Keep in mind, about 80% of the population lives on the peninsula, while only about 20% live on Malaysian uh. Borneo. In addition, the country has over 870 islands off its shores, the state of Sabah having the most with nearly 400, the largest one being Bangi Island. However, the island the island of Sebatik is a little bigger, but the island is split in half with Indonesia in the south. Also, they have a little okay. bit of a dispute with the Philippines in the east. The country is divided into 13 states and three federal territories, Putrajaya Labuan, with the capital Kuala Lumpur. However, due to overcrowding, almost all the government ministries and administrative offices were moved to Putrajaya in 1999. After Kuala Lumpur, the next largest cities are Georgetown on Penang Island and oh. Ipoh. The busiest airports are Kuala Lumpur International, Kota Kinabalu. Remember that one? We've been there, right? Waiting at night. Remember that? What's we went, that? Went to KL. And then? And then we had to wait there for the taxi for, for a long time. For two hours? Yeah. <laughs> and Penang Internationals. Now here's the thing, Malaysia lies under the South China Sea. If you don't know anything about this place and if you didn't watch the Brunei episode, it basically goes like this. <laughs> basically, every country in this area wants so a piece cute. of these things called the Spratly Islands. Today, oh. Malaysia has claim to about 11 of them and the most notable one being Layang Layang, which they built an airbase on. Now you might notice that it's interesting how these two small entities, Singapore and Brunei, got mixed up into this whole region. Well, when it came to Brunei, it kind of went down like this. Welcome to the Malaysia Agreement. Sultans, mm. please sign the paper saying you'd like to be part of Malaysia. <laughs> Wait, I'd have to give up that? And, and I'd have to lose control of what? Oh, hell no. As for Singapore, <laughs> it was more like, Hey, Malaysia, you just got free from British rule. Let's join up. Makes sense? Yeah, we are now one country. Yeah. You have too many Chinese people, and you're gonna waste my money! Yeah, well you only get privileges to the Malay! Uh, you know what, you're out of the club. Yeah, fine, you know, whatever. I quit. One day, you know what, I'm gonna make something of myself! Okay! And boy howdy, did they keep that promise. Otherwise, some notable places of interest might include places like the largest roundabout in the world, wow. the tallest towers, the tallest twin buildings in the world, Kuala Lumpur. Hey, I'm interested in this, the la largest roundabout in the world. What's that? You know a roundabout, like when you go to uh, you have on a road, and then instead of like an intersection, you have like the circle thing. Oh no. But it's huge, right? It's so big. Um uh, interesting. The largest, the largest round roundabout round in the world, mm. the Petronas Towers, the mm. tallest twin buildings in the world, Kuala Lumpur Tower, the Batu Caves with a Hindu shrine. Ah, oh, we have to go there. Oh we, we went, haven't gone. We went there. past it a few times, but we haven't mm. been there. Shrine, the National Monument of Malaysia, Legoland Malaysia. Hey. Represent, I went there. represent Denmark. Yeah. 
Lego is from Denmark, right? Okay, wow. Yeah. So proud. Yay. Hey, Yay. we have to go there. We have to go there. <laughs> Representing Malaysia and Denmark. Oh, actually, United. I went already in Legoland, but it's only in the outside. Mm. Doesn't Just count. to take a, take a photo. It doesn't count. But it's like, oh, I went to Malaysia, I went but only the before. outside. No, because we uh, we uh, uh, we going to Malacca. Mm. Yeah, and I think we pass by Legoland, so we just like you know yeah, drop by pa- just to take pa- a photo. Passing by some place doesn't count as being there, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like oh. I've been to I, the National Mosque of Malaysia, Kekloksi Buddhist Temple, these palaces, the old Dutch buildings wow. of Malaysia. Oh, Malacca. we've both been there, right? This is Malacca, the Before old Dutch. Before we knew each other, we've been there, right? Wow. Yeah. Oh, I love Malacca, it's nice there, though. Malacca, the Leaning Tower of... You know Gula Malacca? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Taluk Intan, Afamosa Fortress, the cat statue of Kuching, this... Hey, that's for you, right? Cat, the Leaning the Tower statue. of Taluk Intan, Afamosa Fortress, the cat's... Hey, that's for you, buddy. Oh, that's... Kuching, this heritage museum, Sarawak Cultural Villages, and the Sepilak Orangutan Rehabilitation Center. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I think I need to, um, I feel like I'm an orangutan. I need to go to the orangutan rehabilitation center. Orangutans, they have plenty of those in here. Which means we can now swing over to the next segment, the... When it comes to Malaysia's land, they got kind of lucky because not only is it like rich and beautiful, but unlike their neighbors, you don't really have to deal with any crazy catastrophes. First of all, Malaysia rests comfortably on the bottom of the Eurasian plate, literally shielded on all sides, mostly by Indonesia and the Philippines. Yeah, and you know, Indonesia and the Philippines, they take like the brunt of natural catastrophes, right? You're from the Philippines, like ex- explain to our viewers what it's like in the Philippines when it comes to floods, storms, Oh, typhoons. Yeah. We always have a floods in the Philippines, everywhere in the Philippines. Typhoons as well. Yeah, all the time. This means that if any earthquakes occur, Indonesia usually absorbs all of it. If cyclones and tropical storms attack, the Philippines and Indonesia take the hit. And if a volcano erupts, they don't have to worry because they don't really have any volcanoes. And it's probably happening in Indonesia. Mm. <laughs> Thanks, Indonesia. Actually, in- now, when it comes to nature, even though the largest lake, the Kenya Reservoir, lies on the West Peninsula of Malaysia side, the Eastern Malaysia Borneo side has all the extremes. They have the highest mountain, Mount Kinabalu. Ah, uh, Kinabalu. That's the one that. Um, can can we like? Um, hey guys, maybe you can help us. Um, is it easy to like go to Mount Kinabalu? Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, we should go there one day. I have, we have friends who went there to look for snakes, right? You remember? Oh, yep. The longest river, the Rajang, and a lot more animals. In fact, Malaysia is one of the most biodiverse countries in the world. They have 14,500 species of flowering plants and trees, over 600 bird species, over 200 species of mammals. Speaking of which, Peninsular Malaysia is home to the most black panthers in the world. Insert Wakanda joke, I don't have time. Speaking of that, the national animal is the Malaysian tiger, which is also featured on the coat of arms, which we will cover in Flag Friday. Stay tuned. Otherwise, they have elephants, rhinos, orangutans, and they even have their own version of tapirs like the ones in South America. Wow. And that creepy looking proboscis monkey. Oh, oh, oh. That oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Any of these species. Oh, I want again, I want again to see that one. The ones in South America. Wow. And that creepy looking proboscis. Oh, proboscis, yeah. yeah. It's so amazing. Yeah. I know what you're thinking. Please don't say that. Let's <laughs> 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 continue. <laughs> This monkey, many of these species you can find in one of the oldest rainforests in the world, over three times older than the Amazon, Taman Nagara. Mm. Malaysia is also a land of caves. In fact, they have the largest chamber in the world that can be found in Sarawak. Otherwise, Malaysia is known for producing electronics, palm oil, petroleum, gas, and rubber. They're actually the second largest palm oil producer in the world and the largest condom maker, just saying. They even have their own national (laughs) car company, Proton, making Malaysia the 11th country in the world with the capability to fully design and engineer and manufacture cars. Otherwise, some national dishes might include things like nasi kandar mm, wow. wow nasi dadang uh. nasi kerabu chicken perchik mangosteen and du- oh my god durian mangosteen durian oh. I had durian today, it was the best. I have mangosteen, I still have in the fridge. Oh yeah, that's actually funny. That's durian funny. are treasured fruits, and the national dish, nasi lemak. Mm. Oh, and if you have the chance, see if you can witness the famous tarik tea shows, the servers pour... This happens all the time everywhere. Also here in Singapore. Pour out tea, sometimes over a meter in length. It's almost seen as like an art form. Okay, I think that's just about it for now. In this segment, uh, let's talk about the coolest part of Malaysia, the Malaysians. 
Just for the record, the word Malay refers to the races that make up Malaysia. Malayan is the geographic term for peoples of West Malaysia on the peninsula and not part of Borneo. And Malaysian is the nationality and citizenship. So a Malay person in Singapore oh, okay. is Malay, but not Malaysian. Okay, got it. Of because I have one friend and then I asked them if they are Malaysian. And mm. then they said that, no, I'm a Singaporean. Then I was like, no, you're Malaysian, right? <laughs> and then they said that Malaysian is a citizen. Mm. So, you can, so you can call me, you're a Malay, not Malaysian. Malay Singaporean, Malay Malaysian, mm. yeah, Chinese Singaporean. Now I understand yeah. also. Ethnicity and nationality. Yeah, mm. that's how it works. Indian descent living in Kuala Lumpur would be a Malaysian and Malayan, but not Malay. Got it? Mm. Probably not. First of all, the country has about 32 million people and is one of the fastest growing nations in Asia. The country is made up of 67% Malay or Bumiputra indigenous Malay peoples. We'll talk more about that in a bit. About a quarter of the population is Chinese, about 7% are Indians, and the rest are other groups mixed in, including a few other Asian groups and Europeans. They use the Malaysian ringgit as their currency, they use the type G and M plug outlets, and they drive on the left side of the road. Now, here's the thing. Let's talk Same politics. Oh! No, we're not getting into an ideological debate. We're just going to explain the system in which Malaysia's government operates. Proceed. <laughs> Malaysia is one of the few monarchies in the world. However, it's not a monarchy in the conventional sense because they kind of have nine kings ish. Mm. These nine states each have a royal leader known as a sultan, and every five years they rotate to allow one of the nine sultans to rule as head king, known as the Yang Di Putuang. So that's, that's the, the saw, one. Yeah. So that's the one we did a reaction. So oh, actually, yeah. guys, you guys help us. Um, how to know how how or what to know more about mm. Malaysia. So they comment that they, they have, turns, they have to ro wow. rotate, rotate. Wow, rotate? Wow. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. Bong. That means that technically, if you were a boy and your dad just finished being king for his five-year term, you could be the next one, but you would have to wait at least 40 years for it to happen. You know, mm. since eight other kings would have to be king before you. Yeah, I know, it's like, oh, <laughs> what the? There's a lot more that goes into it, but that's kind of like the basic underline. They are the only country that does this. I mean, the closest thing would be maybe the Comoros with that rotating president thing, but mm. it's nowhere near as complex as this. Nonetheless, the royals are held under a constitution that limits their power mostly to cultural and religious affairs, as well as appointing certain leaders and so on. Most of the government activity is held and controlled by the Prime Minister and the Parliament. Which brings us to the most recent controversy, the 2018 election. Mm. This effectively changed everything as for the first time since 1957, the BN party was voted out and the new PKR party took over. And it was actually a peaceful transition. We really don't have a lot of time to talk about it, but it's really interesting to look into and talk to a Malaysian person if you want to know more about it. It was like a huge deal for the country. Anyway, the country has two official recognized languages, Malay and English. They were once a British territory, so it kind of makes mm. sense. It's taught from elementary school. Malay is basically intelligible to Indonesian. Both countries can generally understand each other. I it's like Danish and Swedish Norwegian. Oh, yeah. you kind of understand. Yeah, kind so of. it's like Malay and um, Indonesian, they have a bit similar similarities into the word like, um, uh, what's that? Mm. Selamat? Selamat pagi. Uh, pagi. No, no, they have mm. also one one word that sayang, say, sayang, mm. something like that. So it, It's funny how also some Filipino words, some... Um, Filipino words I come from uh, Malay. Mm. Like I saw that funny graphics where it's like Salamat Pagi is like means in Indonesia it means like hello, a good day mm. and same in Malaysian and the same in some other language. Mm. And then in Filipino it means uh, thank you uh, turtle or something like that. Thank you lizard or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Explain this a bit in the Indonesia episode. For Malay, the words are easy to read, but the problem is the intonation. For example, the word for slowly, I believe, is perlahan, not perlahan. It's like you just have to know how uh, these things work. Perlahan. Nonetheless, about half of the population is mostly fluent in three languages, adding their mother tongue, especially if they're part of the Chinese and Indian minority groups. And they are allowed to take vernacular schools that teach in these languages, mm. just like Singapore. Which brings to culture. In Malaysia, the population is quite diverse. diverse. You have a lot of Chinese, known as the Peranakan Chinese, that have existed there since mm. the 15th century. They have a unique Chinese Malay culture with a touch of European influence. Wow. The Indian wow. community is mostly Tamil and Telugu-speaking South Dravidian Indian groups that were brought over during the 
the British colonial years. Then of course you have the largest people group, the ethnic Malays or the Bumiputra, as well as the Orang Asal, whom are like the really indigenous ethnic Malays that make up the majority of the population in East Malaysia on Borneo. Sometimes these two people groups are collectively joined together under the term Malay, although some might disagree. But either way, these two groups kind of steer the direction in terms of what constitutes Malay culture. Oh, and don't even get started on the Bajau people that live on these structures in the middle of the ocean for most oh, of their wow. lives and they've adapted to hold their breath for like 15 minutes wow. underwater. Yeah, those people are cool. <laughs> Another thing I really want to highlight is that sometimes Indonesians <laughs> do kind of accuse Malaysians of stealing their culture because a lot of Malaysians are descended from Sumatra. Sumatra Faith-wise, yes. Malaysia is also quite diverse. Although the country's official religion is Islam, it's a multi-confessional nation. Buddhists are mostly from the Chinese community, Hindus for the Indians, Christians from all races. Numerous temples, mosques, and shrines and churches are found all over. Malay culture is defined by a number of aspects. For one, the clothing. Remember a couple months ago that guy from Malaysia, Kamarul, sent me the Malay hat, the Tengolok. So I forgot to bring this on set when we were filming, but I still have the hat and I, I love it. And I told you I would wear it in the episode. So here I am. I'm wearing it in the Malaysia episode. Thank you so much, man. I asked some of you guys. Wow, I want that too. Oh, you, you want like that. Yeah. In terms of Malay culture. And some things you said included things like the performing arts, mm. such as joget dancing and makyong theater, mm. traditional shadow oh, puppetry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's oh, the thing, yeah. we love that. Performing arts, such as joget dancing and makyong theater, traditional shadow I want to oh, see that. Yeah. Actually, um, did they, um, guys, do you still have this puppetry traditional show? Yeah, yeah, because sure. it seems like I want to, like, you know, watch this kind of yeah. show. I thought Shadow puppetry, Silat martial arts, Song Ke Hey, Silat martial arts, where can we train this thing? Dancing and Mak Yong theater, traditional shadow puppetry, Wait. Silat martial Hey, I want to learn this thing, baby. Okay. Oh! <laughs> Arts, songket weaving, the traditional steep roof and sharp buttress ah, architecture, wow, that's gamelan, cute. Mu ah, gamelan music. That's gamelan the music, Love though. That. Love that. Speaking of which, history time. We don't have enough time to go too far into it, but in the quickest way I can put it, Hindu kingdoms, Buddhist kingdoms, Islamic Sultanate, Portuguese came in, Dutch came in, British came in and made the White Raja period, which made things interesting. World War II, Japanese came in, British came in again, independence. Okay, very quickly, just wow. to cut. That was a really fast history. Oh my god, <laughs> let's just go back. Roof and sharp buttress architecture, gamelan music. Speaking of which, history time. We don't have enough time to go too far into it, but in the quickest way I can put it, Hindu kingdoms, Buddhist kingdoms, Islamic Sultanate, Portuguese came in, Dutch came in, British came in and made the White Raja period, which very made fast. things interesting. World War II, Japanese came in, British came in again, independence. Okay, very quickly just to cut, this is the part where I totally forgot to mention all the cool stuff that happened in the 60s. It's how they got those two states in Borneo. Wow. We'll explain more on Flag Slash Fan Friday, so mm. stay tuned. Economic restructuring and industry boom 2018 vote for the new prime minister and here we are today all right some notable wow. people that you Very guys fast. the malaysian geography suggested that i should mention in this video might include people like siti nuraliza oh, Lat wow the malaysian geography suggested that i should mention in this video might include people like siti oh yeah wow. Can he, what, what, who's this one siti norhavena and norhalisa mm. <laughs> you're a fan right I'm a fan. Uh, Nuraliza, Lat, the cartoonist, mm. Sheikh Muzaffar Shukor, P. Ramli, Ziavi, I know P. Ramli. You know Ziavi? Lat, the cartoonist, Sheikh Muzaffar Shukor, P. Ramli, Ziavi. We have to check this one out. Ziavi. Huh? Probably another singer, right? Mm -hmm. Ziavi. Uh, maybe. Our viewers can explain. Yeah. yeah. Hong Tua, Enrique of Malacca, Michelle Yo, Tony Fernandez, Eric. Oh, I know Tony Fernandez. He's another one of those football Michelle owners. Michelle Yeoh is very famous too. Yeah, but Tony Fernandez, I think he owned a football club. Uh, I can't remember what club it was. Oh! Well. Yeah, he's like, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, the, the other one who owns uh, Cardiff. And he's Asia. also on, on, owner of an AirAsia.com. Yeah. An Asia, Air Asia company. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Tony Fernandez is very famous. What was the club he owned? And, uh, the name escaped. Owner, designer. Ah, uh, maybe it was. Oh, Jimmy Choo. That's the one that you told me into the comments of five brands. Mm. Oh. We singer Yuna, director I James Yuna. Wan, Dr. Mahathir Mohammed, mm. Nicole Ann David, Lee Chong Wei, Henry Golding, and the first Prime Minister, Tunku Abdul Rahman. I'm sure there's way more famous people I could have mentioned, but we gotta move on. Time to go to the last part of this episode, the.
Now, Malaysia is quite the powerhouse player when it comes to Southeast Asia. They got a good thing going on and they host great parties. Outside of Asia, the EU has good relations, making Malaysia one of the top three trading partners of Southeast Asia. And specifically, mm. Austria loves exchanging electronics and oh. pharmaceuticals with them. Huh. Of course, the UK is still pretty close as a former colony. Much of the cultural <laughs> residue is still evident to this day. They are one of the Commonwealth of Nations. Many Malaysians live uh -huh. in the UK and most of the white population in Malaysia are of British descent. Oh, as wow. a member of the Association of Southeast Asian nations. Of course, they have close ties to their neighbors. Cambodians love Malaysia and visit often, whereas Malaysia is one of the closest and biggest investors of Cambodia. Thailand has a few issues since there are those Malay Patani separatists in the south that keep protesting, whereas the Philippines is like, hmm, we're really similar ethnically, <laughs> but you're mostly Muslim and I'm mostly Catholic, but whatever, we both like coffee and fried chicken. When it comes <laughs> to the best friends, <laughs> like it. most Malaysians I've talked to have said Indonesia and Singapore. Singapore may have left the Malaysian Union, but they still kept close ties as a sovereign state. They are quite cooperative in business and even culturally, they are very similar with noticeable Chinese and Indian minority enclaves. Indonesia is like the big brother that has a very different political system, but in the end, they cannot deny how alike they are. The biggest difference would be that most Indonesians have a Javanese background, whereas the Malaysians are just Malay, mostly Sumatran, but they talk the same, they eat the same, they enjoy the same hot, humid atmosphere, and they have close relations altogether. In conclusion, with sultans, kings, tigers, panthers, temples, shrines, mosques, and really cool Hats, it's no wonder why Malaysia is becoming a hot spot that everyone's talking about today. Stay tuned, the Maldives is coming up next. Wow, Maldives, yeah. wow. what a good video! Yeah, You're really nice. so good. Nice video, I liked it. I like it too. What was the most surprising thing you learned today? What the most surprising? Because it's a lot. It's a lot yeah. to put in into, yeah. into into my brain. So yeah, we have I to digest know. all this yep. information, right? It's really it's really a lot. A great video. Let's do let's do another one. We do Indonesia next. Yeah, so anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. So, terima kasih. Terima kasih.